guys. Hope you're doing great. Our today's question is minimum path sum. Given a m by n grid filled with non-negative numbers, find a path from top left to bottom right, which is, for example, in this case, 0, 0 to 3, 3, right? Um, sorry, 2, 2, right? Because this is a 3 by 3 matrix. So which minimizes the sum of all numbers along its path? So if we have to traverse from 1 to this, 1, we have to find the path, the sum of the elements on the path, which is the minimum, right? So you can only move either down or right at any point in time, okay? So from, for example, from 1, you can either move to 1 or you can move to 3. From 3, you can either move to 1 or to 5. From 5, you can either move to 1 or 2 and so on. So in this example, the path would be 1, 3, 1, 1, 1, because that minimizes the sum, right? If you if you take any of the other paths, for example, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 4, 2, 1, that is more than 7. Uh, you cannot go diagonally. So from 1, you cannot go to 5. So that option is not available. And then you can have other paths as well, but this is the minimum one. So this is a classic example of dynamic programming. Any question which involves finding the minimum number of ways or finding the unique paths or finding the minimum sum path, all these questions are short, short dynamic programming questions. And you need not to think about any other approach to solve this question. It is a classic example of dynamic programming. So. Um, in my other videos, I've covered similar questions, but there we have like traversed from the first element to the last element and we have built up the DP array, which is the concept of dynamic programming to solve sub problems and use those results to derive the final result, right? But in this case, we'll be taking the approach other way around. So we'll start from the last element and build up the result to the first element. So it's the same concept, just that it's another approach and I wanted to cover that in this video. So let's get started. So like any other dynamic programming problem, we always have to create a DP array, at least in most cases. We'll just first get the number of rows and columns. Okay, and then we'll create a DP array of the size rows and columns. Cool. So now we, as I said, we'll just traverse from the back or end of the array. So we'll take this equals to rows minus one. I is greater than or equal to zero. And I minus minus, okay? And then we'll again, say j equal to columns minus 1, j is more than equal to 0, and j minus minus, right? Okay. So now for every element, there are a few conditions. For example, if the element is um, in the last row, okay? So from this element, right, if you want to calculate the dp of this element, let's say, for example, 4, Right. Uh, so there is only one way you can come to four that is from two. Correct. So we'll just add the value four to the DP value of two and that will give us the DP value of four. Similarly, if it is in the last column, then there's only one way, for example, for the first one, there is only one way you can come to it. That is from this one. Right. So we'll just add the dp of value of this one to one, and that will give us the dp value for this particular one. But in cases of elements like five, you can come to five from one and from two, because the question says that you can either move down or to the right. So if you are doing it backwards, right? So to five, five, you can either come from one or two, or basically from five, you can go to one or two. 
So we'll use the minimum of the dp of these two, add 5 to it, and that will be our value for dp. And the last case is the element 1 itself, like the last element of the matrix. So there, there is no element to the down of it or to the right of it. And that's why we'll just have to take that value as the dp value as well. So let's just get started with the implementation. So if my, let's say, um, if i is the last row, okay, so rows minus one, but column is not the last column. Um, okay, sorry about that. So j, right? Yeah. So this is not the last column. So in that case, as I said, we'll just calculate the dp of ij as we first add the value itself in every case and then so we'll just since it's already the last row we cannot do anything about it that is there is no other row beneath it um, so the same row but the next column right because you can move from that to this right okay um, and the opposite of this, so which means that if my j is equal to columns minus 1, but i is not equal to rows minus 1, correct? So in that case, just the same, but so we'll still use grid of i and j. Um, but we'll just we can just go to the next row because row is not the last one and the same column because that's the last column otherwise if right if i is not equal to rows minus one and j is not equal to sorry is not equal to columns minus one as well so in that case, uh, for example, here, it's the five element. It is neither on the last row nor the last column. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to, again, oops, sorry, equals to grid of i, j plus the minimum, right? Because we want to minimize the sum. So the minimum of dp of i, plus 1 j correct comma dp of i j plus 1 that's it and then otherwise the only case left is that the element is itself the last one so we'll just assign it the value of itself Okay, and then we have to return the dp of 0, 0. Okay, let's see if that works. Cool. So the time complexity for this is O of m into n, and the space complexity is also O of m into n because we are using dp array which is of the same size as that of the matrix and we are traversing the matrix also once so yeah that is the time and space complexity i hope you find this video helpful and in understanding a different approach of traversing the matrix and using dynamic programming um, to solve the question um, if you do please like share and subscribe and keep coding and take care guys